In our Vedic tradition, a person who constantly repeats the name of Bhagavan would be looked upon as a devotee. If the person keeps repeating his name the whole day, then that person is perhaps called a tapasvi. But when a person repeats the name of any given person the whole day, then we would politely say that the person needs help. Therefore, there is a difference in our attitude towards these two persons. Nama is the name and Nami is the one who has the name. If the name happens to be a time-bound person with limitations, then repeating his or her name will become a mere obsession and will not be beneficial in any manner. Repeating the name of a rich person and talking about his glories all the time just because he has a lot of power and influence will not be beneficial in any way. Clearly, there is no benefit in repeating the name of a time-bound person. But when a person repeats the name of Bhagavan, there is bound to be a benefit. There is a purpose in it. Bhagavan Krishna teaches us that amongst all the forms of worship, I am the worship of Japa, repetition of the sacred names of Bhagavan. Yajna Nam Japa Yajnyosmi. The word Rama comes from the root Ram, which has the meaning of playing, reveling, being joyful. The one in whom people discover joy is Rama. Ramante Yasmin Iti Ramaha. The word Rama was there long before Lord Rama came. By extension, your child, your work, your home, yourself, all that you delight in are Rama for you. When we chant Rama, we invoke his presence, his blessings and his qualities. If dharma had to take a form, it would be Rama. Dharma Vigrahavan Ramaha. A manifestation of dharma, that is, the universal values that contribute to peace, welfare, happiness and growth for all. Despite being an avatara, a divine reincarnation, Sri Rama's life was not an easy life. It just seemed like moving from one crisis to another. From being asked to fight some asuras as a teenager, which was life-threatening, to spending 14 difficult years in a forest, despite being the rightful heir to the throne, to not being able to perform the last rites for his own father, to being away from his loving devoted wife because she was kidnapped, to building the bridge because there was no other way to Lanka, to developing an army where there was none, to waging a battle with a formidable opponent like Ravana, to facing some words of doubt from one of the subjects about Sita Devi's purity, and the list goes on. And yet, the kinds of crises that Sri Rama faced did not define him. What defined him was his living and abiding by dharma, the universal framework of values and principles that have stood the test of time. Every crisis, every role, was an opportunity to live out the principles of justice, compassion, love, support, devotion to his parents, love for his subjects, and so on. What we do during and after the crisis will shape our lives, our societies, and our nations. Language has the unique ability to shape reality evoke emotions and even transform lives. And among the many words which carry a profound significance, 
the word Rama has a sacred resonance. It encapsulates stories, teachings, and spiritual experiences. We hear about the transformative power of the word Rama, drawing inspiration from the lives of Rishi Valmiki, Swami Samartha Ramdas, and others who became saints through the divine blessing of the sacred word. Rishi Valmiki When Ratnakaraha was a few years old, he wandered into a forest and got lost. The young boy was found by a hunter who adopted and raised him. Under his foster father's guidance, Ratnakara grew up to become an accomplished hunter. When Ratnakara reached marriageable age, he was married to a girl from the hunter's family. In time, Ratnakara's family also increased in number and he became a father to many children. The expansion of his family meant that it became difficult for the hunter Ratnakara to make ends meet. So out of desperation, he took to robbery and began looting travellers who passed by his area. One day, Rishi Narada was passing by the forest where Ratnakara lived. Sensing a good opportunity, Ratnakara attacked Narada, intending to rob him. However, Rishi Narada remained unfazed. This surprised Ratnakara, who was used to the sight of people, cowering in fear at the very mention of his name. Narada questioned Ratnakara as to why was he committing this papa of robbing others. And Ratnakara replied, to feed my family. To this Narada said, Ratnakara, go and ask your family if they also will share the papa you are committing to just take care of them. So Ratnakara returns to his family and asks his parents and wife if they are willing to share his papa. All say no. No one was ready or willing to share the burden of Ratnakara's papa. Heartbroken at his family's response, Ratnakara returned to Narada and asked him for the way out. To which Narada asked him to chant the name Ramaha. But no matter how much Ratnakara tried, he couldn't pronounce Rama. So Narada asked Ratnakara to pronounce Rama backward as Mara 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 Ratnakara began his tapasya by chanting as Narada had instructed him to. He became so absorbed in the name Rama that days passed into months which passed into years. Ants covered his body with mud to build their nest. And then when Lord Brahma appeared to bless him, he saw Ratnakara covered by the ant hill or Valmika and gave him the name Valmiki. Such was the transformative power of the Nama, Rama, that Rishi Valmiki was then entrusted with the work of writing the Ramayana that continues to transform the lives of millions across generations. Bhagavan Shiva appeared in Rishi Buddha Kaushika's dream and revealed the Sri Rama Raksha Stotram. Sri Rama Raksha is the protection and power given by Bhagavan Sri Rama to us. Within it is included the mantra. Shri Rama Rama Rame Ti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahasranama Tattulyam Rama Nama Varanane By meditating on Rama Rama Rama, the name of Rama, my mind gets absorbed in Rama. The name of Rama is as great as the 1000 names of Bhagavan as in Vishnu Sahasranama Stotram. In the Ramayana, when the Vanaras, monkey-like humanoids, 
were building the bridge to Lanka. The rocks kept sinking to the ocean floor. Hanuman simply said, just chant the sacred name of Rama and the rocks will not sink. Sure enough, the Vanaras did so. The rocks floated in the water and thus Rama Setu, the bridge to Lanka, was built. Goswami Tulsidas, considered to be an incarnation of Rishi Valmiki, said that the name of Rama was mightier than Rama himself. He not only wrote Sri Ram Charitamanas, Ramayana in the language Avadhi, he also had darshan of Sri Rama due to his devotion many times. He would say that whether you remember Rama in a pleasant or unpleasant mood, Rama surely blesses you. Much like the seeds in the field, whether thrown rightly or wrongly, still sprout beautifully. Swami Samartha Ramdas Centuries later, the transformative power of Rama found resonance in the life of Swami Samartha Ramdas, a 17th century saint and spiritual teacher. Samartha Ramdas was the Raja Guru, the spiritual advisor of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, one of the greatest kings of India. Samartha Ramdas was born in 1608 on Ram Navami Day as Narayana in Jalna district, Maharashtra. His father died when Narayan was around seven years of age, which made him withdrawn and also engrossed in thoughts about God. That time, boys and girls were married in their pre-teens or even teens. And so on the day of his wedding, when he was 12 years, the commencement of the religious rituals began with the customary utterance of Shubha Mangala Savadhan, meaning an auspicious event is to take place. Everyone, please be alert. Intended to announce the commencement of ceremonies for an auspicious marriage, these words also serve to get the bride and the groom to be alert about the upcoming responsibilities of married life. It is said that Narayan fled his own wedding upon hearing the word Savadhan. Just 12 years old at the time, he spent another 12 years as a sadhu at Takli in complete devotion to Lord Rama. He would stand in the river from dawn to noon, chanting Shri Rama, Jaya Rama, Jaya Jaya Rama, the sacred Rama Taraka Mantra. During this period, he adhered to a rigorous daily routine and devoted most of his life to japa and exercise. As per legend, he once blessed a widow lady of a long married life without knowing that her husband had just died. It is said that her husband was restored to life. This act of miracle made him famous in Nasik. He is thought to have attained enlightenment at the age of 24. His devotion was so intense that he adopted the name Ramadas, a servant of Rama. He travelled for another 12 years in the country which was struggling with the Mughal invasions. And unlike many other saints, he was acutely aware of the political situation and wanted to rouse the masses to respond appropriately. Samartha Ramdas initiated his mission in the year 1644 by performing Prana Pratishtha of a Murti of Lord Rama at Chafal. Later, Shivaji Maharaj would provide a land grant for his ashram because he was his Raja Guru. Then besides authoring Das Bodha and many other texts to awaken the masses to physical fitness and the Kshatriya spirit, he established 11 temples of Hanuman in towns and villages in various regions of southern Maharashtra referred to as 11 Maruti. Through his spiritual practices and Shraddha in Rama, Swami Samartha Ramdas attained enlightenment, became a revered saint, leaving behind a legacy of devotion and teachings. 
that continue to inspire spiritual seekers to this day swami vivekananda in more recent times in the 1900s swami vivekananda was traveling across india as a wandering monk without any money totally trusting that he would be provided for by bhagwan one day he was sitting on the railway platform at tari ghat station without any food for a long time a businessman was sitting next to swami vivekananda he was critical of sanyasis he sat opposite swami vivekananda opened his lunch box and while eating he started mocking swami ji look here what nice puris and laddus i am eating and you are here with an empty stomach having nothing to eat why don't you work and earn money like me then you can also eat drink and have all comforts and you won't be dependent on society swami hadn't eaten anything from two days he didn't speak a single word and just sat quietly in the meantime a local person arrived near the platform he was carrying a bundle under one arm a glass in one hand a jug of water in the other and also a mat under one of his arms it seemed like he was looking for someone the moment he saw swami vivekananda he came near him quickly spread the mat on a clean spot and put down all the things he was carrying then he called swami vivekananda and invited him to take the food he had brought vivekananda was quite surprised by his gesture and told the man that he might have mistaken his identity but the strange man said that he had brought the food for vivekananda and no one else and then he explained i am a sweet meat vendor and was having a usual nap after my noon meal In my dream I dreamt that Sri Rama was pointing you out to me and telling me that he was pained to see you without food from the previous day and that I should get up instantly prepare some puris and curry and bring them to you at the railway station with some sweet meats ice cold water and a mat for you to sit upon the strange man further said I woke up thinking it was just a dream and I slept again. But Ram ji came to me again in my dreams and told me to do as he had said. And so I got up and quickly prepared some puris and curry and took some sweets which I had prepared this morning along with cold water and a mat from my shop. I ran here directly and recognized you at once from a distance. Now please come and have your meal while it is fresh. You must be very hungry. Moved, Swami Vivekananda thanked the simple man. But the man politely said, "No, no, Swami ji, do not thank me. It is all the will of Sri Ram ji." The businessman who was watching all this felt ashamed of his act. He went to swami vivekananda and begged his forgiveness much before this incident swami vivekananda had been initiated in the rama mantra by his guru shri ramakrishna paramahamsa in more recent times kanchi mahaperiyava said that the highest tarka mantra is rama nama as it is the only name that can help us withstand the challenges of life And so what are you waiting for inspired by these great saints you too will have a story to share about how the rama nama transformed you shri rama jaya rama jaya jaya rama